connected. I look it up. One word for look is Google. Don't go online and Google how many came out of that. In other words, whatever you do, don't let the devil rent space in your mind while you're waiting for your deliverance. Amen. In other words, here, he said, don't look at it. Why? But the things that are, are not seen, look at that. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal. In other words, subject to change. If you can see it, it's subject to change. If you can experience and you're in it, it's subject to change. There's nothing you're in that it can't change by tomorrow. The There's nothing you're in that God won't turn that thing around. So whatever you're dealing with, whatever it is, change is coming. If you don't look at it, if you don't consider it, if you don't focus on it, glory to God. How many times somebody going through something and every day you talk about it? Every day you look at it. Every day you calling everybody, you texting everybody about it. No, I'm trying to tell you. God said, don't look at it. Because if you can see it, it's subject to change. But he said, I want you to do this. I want you to, the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Look at the things that are not seen. In other words, look at the eternal. Look in the spirit realm. Find out what it is in the supernatural. Go in the fourth dimension and find out what you have in the fourth dimension and you're going to just believe God and your faith is going to draw what's in the fourth dimension into the natural because you're not looking at it, you're not considering. Because here's what I found out. A lot of times we go through something and we sit up in here and we act like, well, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't care what you're going through. All I know if you're going through it, it's subject to change. All I know, if you're going through it, don't focus on it. Don't look at it. Don't rehearse it. Don't talk about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because we're getting ready to release a tsunami in your life, and the blessings are going to come. But you can't be worrying about, uh, should I pray? Should I believe? Uh, is, he, uh, is he? No, I'm telling you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you ain't done. Somebody said, I ain't came to Bible study. Whatever. Somebody said, I ain't did everything right. Whatever. Somebody said, you don't know. I, 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 I need to suffer. No, whatever. God said, if you belong to me, I already know you won't, won't be nothing. I already know you. I got to work with you. I already to know that you ain't perfect. I want to know. Don't worry about that right now. I need you to step on over here and to the eternal and start knowing if you are a believer, there are some things that belong to you. If you are a believer, there's some healing that belong to you. If you are a believer, there's a debt freedom that belong to you. If you are a believer, every one of your family members is supposed to be saved. Glory to God. But we're looking at what it looks like. We're looking at what they're doing. We're looking at what we don't have. We're looking at what it is in the bank or what you got in the bank account. If you go to your bank account and look at what you got in there every week, you'd be depressed by Thursday. Look at somebody said, don't keep looking at that. <laughs> and so I'm trying to tell y'all, we need to know that it's subject to change. Amen. I like that. It's subject to change. So I'm not looking at it. I'm not considering it. If the doctor tell you that, you know, this is what your daddy had. This is what your granddaddy had. So it's in your family. And then are you going to consider what he said or are you going to consider what God said? Because he can talk you into something. Amen. I remember one day he said, uh, what your daddy had? I said, Jesus. What, what your mama had? Jesus. Well, what your granddaddy had? Jesus. Everybody had Jesus. And if they didn't have Jesus, the curse stops here. Because I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things become new. I have eternal life living on the inside of me. I have life. I have life that will never die in me. God living in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what you see. Thank God, do your job, but don't be come trying me, tell me to accept what you, I need you to do your job, move aside, so I can know what not to look at. And see, a lot of us, see, 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 y'all look, oh, that, 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 no, you, know, you, need, you know, that ain't common sense. I know it's faith sense. Common sense ain't going to get you nowhere. Long. Don't look at it. Look at the eternal. Look at what you can't see. Faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you're in faith, you can't see it in the natural, but you see it in the spirit. And I see it already done. I can't explain it. 
I can't, I can't try to convince you what I already see. I already see it. I already have it. I already experience it. And that is how you get change to come. So today, I'm talking about power, how to release power for change. How many want some change in their life? Today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day. And I want to wish all of the mothers a happy Mother's Day. You know, God sent me a rose. That's why I'm here at the Huntington Park Rose Garden, because God sent me a rose 27 years ago. We've been married. My first lady, Penny, her first name is Rose. Roses are special, and they're beautiful, and they're awesome, and they're so needed. Every mother is needed, and they're like a rose. So today, I want to say to my wife, Happy Mother's Day. I thank you for being who you are. Thank you for watching over us and the kids. You just do so much. Mothers cannot, there's not a price on what you do. So today, Happy Mother's Day. Not only you, every mother that's listening, I want to let you know you're special. You're like a rose. And we want to wish you Happy Mother's Day. If you have a mother, and today, make sure you call her. Make sure you see her. Make sure you go there and show your appreciation to or how beautiful your rose is. Mothers are special. And so today, we'll just set everything aside and let the day be your day. Because mothers are beautiful. They're like roses. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. And we'll see you soon. Like, like I was, G. Holy Witness came to my door the other day, right? They came to my, my door. I'm in a new neighborhood. They must ain't, they must ain't got the clue. They must ain't got the, the info yet. They come knocking on my door, waking me up and everything. I said, what? Who is it? G.O. Winnie, two little old ladies, too. I felt bad for her. At first, I was, you know, but I felt bad for her. I said, I'm going out here. Mm -hmm. I opened the door. I said, hey, how you doing? Excuse me. We were like, no, I don't like that. I believe on Jesus. Come here. And I just said, Jesus, Jesus died for me. He rose up on the third day with all power. And they said, I believe on Jesus only. I'm not, but I don't have to go to no door. I don't have to be one of the hundred for the 4,000. I'm not going to be that because if you keep reading, the Bible says a great number that no man can number. That you sitting right here, running around here, waking everybody up. You ain't got to do that. Just believe on Jesus, honey. And I said, believe on Jesus. I said, don't stand before God with no pamphlet in your hand talking about you trying to get in by working for salvation. You can't wait for it. It's what Jesus has already done. He's already finished it. Come here. Let me lay my hands on you right now. I was preaching so hard, all my sons were standing at the step. Sister P was looking at her, daddy was in there smiling. He was like, preach it, son, preach it. <laughs> I remember, so I just preached to him. They were looking at her, oh, Lord. Okay. I said, turn to Romans 10 and 9 right now. Okay. <laughs> they turned to I read it, tell me what it says. Read. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart. God said, raise him from the head. Do you believe? Do you believe? Yeah, we believe, oh Jesus. I said, that's all you got to believe on. You ain't got to do this. Your mind is twisted. Where everybody else at? So, after I finish, I, I preach a hall. I, I, I said, I, I preach about five sermons to a dentist. I preach hall. And then all of a sudden, right, they were going to the other house, right? They saw Sister P coming out. They was on there looking like, don't go over there. <laughs> Why? Come on. You know, when I was coming up, my daddy and him, you know, we, we, they used to come to the house and we feel bad for them then. They didn't work. And come on in, they used to come in, my dad sat them down, he wanted to hear what they got to say, then he'll talk and give them the word, and they didn't receive. I said, oh, I ain't trying that then, because they, they ain't gonna come in my house, sit down. No, stay in the door and take this. <laughs> I said, who, do, who is Jesus in your life? Is he Lord? Is he God? Well, no, well, he, he, he Lord, we believe he Lord, but is he God? No, no, well, he, well, who was God? Who was Jesus talking to on the cross when he said, uh, you know, my God, my God, who's I was thinking of? I said, can you read? 
He was talking to the father, but the father, the father had already in heaven, he gave, he gave a piece of him to Mary. He functioned as God, Jesus functioned on the earth as the son, and the Holy Spirit functioning as the power one. Three but one. I am a father, I am a daddy, and I am a very good looking man. No, I'm just I'm, 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 I'm just editing. I'm just joking. But I'm trying to tell them. They can't understand. I said you can't understand everything anyway. How you cause you don't understand it. God is omniscient. You ain't gonna understand everything. Just know. That the father, he was talking to the father because he was functioning on earth. He was functioning on earth as a son. He couldn't be God on the earth. Why? Because in the beginning, God gave a father to man and man gave it over to Satan and Satan became the God of the world. So now he can't come down as God because now man had a father and Satan had it. So he had to disguise himself as a man. Lord have mercy. The Bible said he stripped himself of his mighty power and glory and he, he came down as a man. He not only was the son of God, he was the son of man, which qualified him to step on the earth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And that is why he operated and talked to the father on the earth because he was a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. If he would have been God, then he couldn't tell us to lay hands on the sick because we said that's God. If he was God, we couldn't cast out devils because we say that's God. That's why he stripped himself of all that glory of God, came down as a man. He walked like a man. He talked like a man. He laid, he went to sleep like a man. He was just anointed by the Holy Ghost when he stepped in the Jordan River. And the same anointing that's on him is on us. I could see one lady won't change it for nothing. The other lady was looking like, thank you so much. Thank you. Why am I doing all this work in here? <laughs> Why? Because you don't have to. And I'm telling all that because when they knock on your door, I want you to do the same thing. Amen. Don't be scared of nobody. Amen. If you don't know everything, they don't know you don't know everything. Just, just stick with what you know. So they'll twist the Bible up. You know what I'm saying? How is it? I'm finished with that. I'm going on. But how is it that they so right and we so wrong? Somebody died. They won't come in this house. But you want me to come in your hall? But you won't come in this house like it's so bad, like God wouldn't, I'm not coming in. Somebody died, you can't come in for a funeral or none of that. That's a bunch of foolishness. God, that's bondage. Somebody said, they're going to write here some letters. I ain't going to read it. I'm not going to read your letters. I'm right, and you're wrong. Wait, why, why are you doing that? Because we got to let people know, I'm getting back on the road, but you got to let people know because deception is out here to deceive us. And I looked at them. They really don't want to do that. They have been deceived. Paul was like that too. He was Saul. He thought the same way until he met Jesus. So here's what I prayed for them. I prayed that Jesus will reveal himself to you. I'm looking for him to come to church one day. How I get off and all that? There must be some people waking y'all up and y'all talking about, are you going to open the door? I like you ain't at home. You at home. Let's go there and say, we don't want none of that. We're Jesus only. We believe in God. We speak in tongues and we lay hands on the sick. <laughs> Amen. 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 Y'all do what you want. I'm, 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 I'm just, see, when you get a little older, you just, you, you straight to the point. When I was younger, I was like, you know, please, I don't want to hurt nobody. Mm -mm, mm -mm, whatever. I'm straight to the point right now. And so we got to do that. Amen. Now let's get on to here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Somebody say, you know, um, Pastor, um, how do you know you're right all the time? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. Because I'm in the Word. And then I put it to work, and he proves to me every time he's faithful to his Word. I mean, you remember last Sunday uh, when we had the Easter play, right? Minister Times got sick. He got sick on the front row. I was sitting there. All of a sudden, I thought maybe it got too hot. But when I went over there, I could tell it wasn't from being hot. He was under attack. It was either a stroke, uh, a heart attack, or some. See, it was some. It was some serious. Because he was he was falling back. I was in the head. He was beginning to turn a color. I said, "Guys, lift him up and put him in the hallway." Yeah. Now here's here, here's what here's what I'm so thankful of. I went back and sat down. I was trying to get down a little low, what you want me to do? And then I got it. Bam. He said, go over there and speak to it. Yeah. Don't pray to me. God said, don't pray to me. That's what, that's what God told me. Wait a minute, I'm getting ready to pray. Don't pray to me right now. I need you to go and take your authority. Yeah. I need you to get down there and say, I command life to stay in your body. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Command your body to line up function right now in the name of Jesus and I didn't even have to once you pray in the natural take authority then you got to go ahead and pray for things you don't even know about and I listened and everybody was praying in tongues so now we took authority and then we prayed in tongues praying for things we don't know about How do you pray for the unknown? You pray in tongues. And in, you're praying to God in the spirit. And it ha- if it was anything, it would have been hammered right then. So I stayed down there until I got a note victory. The, um, uh, the, the paramedics and all them, they came. And God said, that's it. I got right up, went on back, got on, sit down, got up, and some of my song went on. Amen. Why? Well, he went to the hospital, called me the next day. And he said they went and checked everything at the hospital. And couldn't find nothing. <laughs> Minister Time, look at Minister Time. Come in, Minister. Look, Minister Time, he had Bible study. He was at Bible study last Wednesday. But it won't, it won't, it won't nothing we done. It was what Jesus done. It was believers that know, okay, let's, it's time to put what we've learned to work. And so no matter what, God would always show up. Yeah. So we know what to do when we don't know what to do. Yeah. Say amen to that. Amen. And minutes of time, minutes of time, he was back today and got to preach this Wednesday, right? That's right. I know you're ready to preach up in here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> amen. Now look, on the count of three, let's give, now we give God praise for what he done. One, two, three, let's praise him right now. Okay, sit down. That's why I believe on Jesus because he backs up. He confirms the word. Glory to God. We had one lady that had a walker coming in and she had all the things mighty with her. Doctor gave all her bad reports. She couldn't walk without the walker, without, you know, the cane and everything. And then she came up. The Lord said, don't you pray for her. I said, don't. Pray for. Because in the past, that's what we all do. We've been trained. Pray, oh Lord, please, 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 please. Jane Brown, please. He said, don't pray for her. She's at a walker. She can't walk without the walker. What happened in the book of Acts when the crippled man came? I said, well, they didn't pray at all. They said, no, they didn't pray. They said, they looked at them and said, silver and gold have I none. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the authority they took and spoke to the crippled people, person, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> is what caused the miracle to happen. Yeah, yeah. And she couldn't walk without the walk. <laughs> but look at her. Come here, sir. Come in. Step out here now. Step out. Make the devil mad. Come on up here. Look at that. She's walking without the walk. And I'm like, 
like, I'm like, hey, I'm like, ho, what's going on? And what, ha what happened? Tell me, tell me uh, what happened. God is good. I left here and started walking on my own. And what did you have? What were you walking with? A walker. And what did the doctor say? There was nothing he could do for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Calm down. I'm doing an interview. I got to get myself under control here. The doctor said there was nothing. Say that again. It was nothing that he could do. And I even went to MCB and saw two specialists there. And they said it was nothing they could do. And Jesus healed you. Yes, he did. Yes. Yes. Will somebody give God a praise? Thank you, Devin. Somebody give God a praise up in here. But what happened? You got to be led by the Spirit. You don't just go do what you see everybody else do. I said, Lord, what do you want? What do you want to do? Sometimes Jesus spit and put the uh, spit in the clay. Sometimes he spoke. Sometimes he said, go your way. So you got to listen. And the Lord said, don't pray for. He don't want you to do. Speak to it. Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he say shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he say. Say, so, say I'm going to speak. I'm going to say something. And a lot of us are praying too much. Pray in the spirit, but after you pray in the spirit, when you go to your situation, start taking, declare and decree something. Somebody said, well, how can I do that? Because he told you to, and that's why things don't happen. Amen. He told us in the scriptures in Matthew 10, he said, heal the sick, cast out devils, yeah. raise the dead. Yeah. He told you to. He said, pray to God. He said, I gave you authority. Yeah. I gave you the name. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Raise the dead. Yeah. Cast out devils. Until you do that, he not going until you start speaking to your situation, ain't nothing going to go. You sitting here, you praying to God. You know, this, this is good prayer. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that by his stripes I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, I believe I receive. You took my feminism. You bear my sickness. So right now, I claim this, Lord. I am healed. That sounds real good, but that's a religious prayer. Because he didn't tell us to pray that way when it comes to that. He told us to speak. To it. Uh -huh. You. So here's the correct way. In the name of Jesus, I speak to this pain. I command you to go. I speak to this bad report. I talk to you and I command. I speak to this habit. I speak to this cigarette habit. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right here. Don't just keep smoking it and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Now look at it, say, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you, nicotine spirit. I command you to leave me. I don't have taste for you no more. In the name of Jesus, whatever I ask in the name, I can have it in the name. Until we change what, how we pray, that's why I can't wait. I can't wait to this Friday. All night, not all night prayer. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Midnight prayer. I don't want to get no back. <laughs> but <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't wait to speak the stuff. I can't wait to find out what we believe in for and speak to it and then turn it over to the Holy Ghost. So we're going to see a lot of people thinking so much that night. I'm not talking about so much that night. I'm talking about there's a foundation that we're releasing. And every day, every minute, every hour, every week, everything's going to start getting better. Things, God's going to raise up somebody to use their power because the church is coming together and pray. Praise the Lord. Pastor James T. Illum Jr., Dudamus Christian Center. I would like to invite you out to our second annual Midnight prayer. It's in May 19th, and that midnight prayer is going to be awesome. The body of Christ will come together again praying. When the church comes together and prays, something happens. In Acts 12, they say when they came together, the church, they prayed without ceasing, a fervent prayer, and angels started to be released, and, and 
the blessings start knocking on people's doors. So we're going to believe God again. Come on out if you need something supernatural to happen. You know, Paul and Silas prayed, Bible says in Acts 16, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the earthquake came. It was like a spiritual tsunami showed up, and yet it shook the place, and all the bands was loose. Everyone's doors was open. So I believe as we come together, doors will be open, everyone's bands will be loose. Tell a friend, come on out, May 19th, midnight prayer. You know, that's the time from 12 to 3 where the enemies um, assignment can be broken over your life. So the Lord, I know he'll be there and to meet us there to release the grace and blessings that we need as the body of Christ. We'll see you there. Midnight prayer, May 19th. Come on out, 11.45, get set, and we'll begin to pray. Tell a friend, because with the more come, more power. Want to put a thousand in the flight to 10,000. See you there at Midnight Prayer. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, uh, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.